Confirm target. Affirmative. All right, guys, we are going to take a look at how basic reinforcement learning can solve this frozen lake problem and see what it is the AI is actually learning in this process. The frozen lake is divided into an 8x8 eight eight grid. Our AI or agent starts at the top left corner of the grid and must find its way to the cabin at the bottom right. The agent can only move up, down, left or right to navigate from one cell or state to the next. If the agent tries to go off grid, it just bounces back to the same spot. If it falls into a hole, it resets back to the starting state. When it reaches the goal, it receives a reward of one and resets. For this particular environment, there are no rewards or penalties for any other states and that includes falling into holes. Let's start training our agent. Now, if it looks like the agent is just stumbling around randomly, well, that's because it is. A nicer way to put it is that it is exploring. Oops, it had just fallen into a hole. Did it learn how not to fall into a hole next time? Nope, since there are no rewards or penalties associated with falling into holes, no learning is happening. Until it starts getting rewards, it knows as much as You know nothing, Jon Snow. Let me bring up some information to help keep track of what's going on. The agent has attempted and failed this many times. This shows the number of actions or steps taken in the current episode. We want to start seeing successful runs, the chance of success over the last 100 runs, and the best success rate achieved. Let's speed up the training. Our agent may look like an advanced killing machine, but it has a lot of work to do in the intelligence department. When the agent reaches the goal and receives its first reward, Finally! the learning begins. But what does that mean? It means that we'll take the reward and plug it into this scary looking equation. For now, don't worry about how or why the equation works. What is calculated is called a Q or quality value associated with the state and action that brought the agent to the reward. When the agent finally reaches the goal, let's say from this state, by taking the down action, the state and action's Q value is updated with the plus one reward from the goal. In subsequent episodes, when the agent reaches the states that already have Q values, for example, this one, by taking a down action from the state above, the above state's Q value is updated using the Q value from the state below. It's like the agent receives partial reward for reaching already discovered paths. Again, we continue this pattern for the state above. This state is reachable by two different states. The pattern is the same. Eventually, the bottom path is going to be discovered as well. Let me erase some of these arrows. Each state has four Q values, one for each action. In theory, the largest Q value dictates the optimal path, so it would be the down action in this case. If the agent takes a left action, its Q value would be calculated using the largest Q value from the state on the left, which should be this one. So the same thing if it takes a up action. When it tries to go right, it would stay in the same state, so it would use the largest Q value in its own state. As the agent visits and revisits the same states and actions, the Q values are updated again and again. At some point, the changes are going to be so tiny to the Q values that further training is not going to change it. Let me fast forward the training and overlay the grid with the Q values. We can see from this state, the prescribed action is to go down. Similarly, from these dates, they're similar to the example I gave earlier. After almost 600 episodes, the agent has found a path to the reward. 
However, notice that there are still a lot of states on the bottom half of the grid that don't have non-zero Q values. If we were to settle on the first path and stop training, then we wouldn't know if a better path lies ahead. So we should continue training. After 4,000 something episodes, the Q table looks a bit fuller. The agent will sometimes take the action prescribed by the largest Q value in that state. This is called exploitation. And it will sometimes take random steps, or exploration. This balance of exploitation versus exploration is how the agent can uncover the best path. Let's take a second to talk about what the Q table would look like in code. If this was Python, the Q table would be a 2x2 two two array. Let's say this is state 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 63. The table will have 0 to 63 by the number of actions, represented by 0 to 3. So state 7 would look something like this. Let's fast forward. After over 5,000 episodes, the Q table is complete and its values appear to no longer change. The values are actually still changing, but the changes are so minuscule that they're negligible, which means the Q values have converged and the agent has learned the optimal solution to this problem. At this point, if we were to remove the random exploration factor, the agent will reach the goal 100% of the time, so we can stop training now. Now that the agent is trained, I've reloaded the grid and we're going to use the trained Q table to do the runs. We can see that the agent does reach the goal 100% of the time. At this point, you might be wondering why we don't just use a pathfinding algorithm to solve this problem. It would certainly be faster and you would be correct. However, what if we, the programmer, don't know how to solve the problem? Let's do a recap. The AI only knew what actions it could take, and through random actions, it found the shortest path to the goal. That's pretty amazing. That means it could potentially solve problems that we humans don't know how to solve. All right, it's time to turn up the difficulty. I've reloaded the environment and turned on the slip refactor. That means whenever the agent takes an action, there's a chance that the agent slips to adjacent states. For example, here the agent wanted to go down, but it unintentionally slipped to the left instead. There was also a chance that it would have slid to the right side also. After about 1000 episodes, the agent starts finally having some success. When the slippery factor was off, the agent was able to find the reward in about 200 episodes. After 7,000 episodes, we're still in a single digit success rate. After about 9,000 episodes, the success rate is looking much better. At 11,000 episodes, the success rate is looking pretty good. At 13,000 episodes, the success rate is almost 90%. Let's see if we can do better. After 15,000 episodes, our best success rate is 92%, which is really good. It doesn't look like it's going to get any better, so let's wrap up the training. Let's see what the agent has learned and see if it makes any sense. It wants to start by going down, but all the states underneath wants to push it back up. There's a general push to go right and stay along the edge. Now there's a general push to keep hugging the wall and go downwards. Here it wants to go right. That means there's a chance that the agent is going to slip either up or down. And eventually it's going to slip down, which is the direction that it wants. Choosing right is actually a great choice because it avoids dropping into any holes. Just by eyeing it, we can tell that, yeah, this is pretty much the optimal path because it would be so much harder to navigate through uh, the middle diagonally. And also the chance of making it through the bottom is uh, very, very unlikely. Another name for the completed Q table is an optimal policy. 
By following the policy, the agent can solve this environment. But if we were to move the configuration of the holes around, this policy would fail. The agent would have to retrain based on the new configuration. Unfortunately, the agent is not learning a generalized strategy to solve this type of environment. And that is the limitation of this type of learning. Alright, this is the moment of truth. Our training has shown that we have a 92% chance of making it to the goal. We got one shot at this. Let's see if our agent makes it. Oh, we're getting closer. No, don't, don't go back up. We can see what a pain in the butt it is to be slipping around. Yes, look at him, arriving in style. Let's do some terminating. No, we took too long to train and gave John Connor time to set up a trap. That's alright, we'll get him next time. Well, I hope you have a better understanding of the AI learning process after this video. Be sure to subscribe so we can dig more into this and other AI topics. Thanks for watching.